Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with a Warner release of nine CDs featuring the violin artistry of Johanna Marzi. Fascinating story behind this. And, you know, there are a couple discs also on Deutsche Gramophone, but this is the vast majority of her recorded repertoire. And it contains, let's just tell you what's in it, the Brahms Concerto with the Philharmonia and Kletsky, the Bach Sonatas and Partitas for solo violin on three discs, all of the Schubert music for violin and piano, um, the violin sonatas or sonatinas or whatever he called them, um, and the Rondo Briant and the Fantasy in C Major, D934, which is just, who love it, love it, love it. And uh, let's see, and the grand duo for violin and piano with with uh, Jean and oh Antonietti or Jean Antonietti, whatever you want to call him. He's the pianist and he's perfectly perfectly fine. And then the Mendelssohn violin concerto twice, once with the Philharmonia with Paul Kletsky, and then from a year before with the Philharmonia at Wolfgang Savalisch. These were all recorded in the early to mid nineteen fifties. And then finally the Beethoven two romances. And Mozart's Violin Concerto Number 3, also with Savalish. The romances are with Kletsky. Now, let's talk a little about Miss Marcy. She was a stupendously talented violinist. But then again, you know, I, I'm of two minds about this because everybody was a stupendously talented violinist. You don't make recordings for major labels of the Bach sonatas and partitas unless you're stupendously talented, right? I mean, that the idea? Her, her career was very, very checkered. She was... She was a Hungarian Jewish violinist who was, of course, forced to flee Europe, basically, um, when the Nazis came to power. And then when she started making recordings in the early 50s, I mean, she had some issues. She was interned by the Nazis she, with her husband. She, she finally um, was rescued, and, and then she got divorced, and then she started her career again, like so many post-war violinists. And... and um, the Jewish ones are particularly who were not able to flee when the fleeing was good. So, so after that, she started to make some recordings and she had a rather bumpy ride. First of all, when she was doing the Mendelssohn, she didn't get along very well with Savalish, so she wanted to remake the Mendelssohn, which she did with Kletsky. It's actually quite good. The Bach Sonatas and Partitas, they're both good, so it's fine. The Bach Sonatas and Partitas uh, are wonderful performances, but they were produced by Walter Legg, who supposedly made unwanted sexual advances towards her um, after having signed her. She was a very attractive young woman. I mean, maybe you can see that here. And and uh, she vowed never to work with him again, which obviously put the kibosh to a certain extent on her recording legacy. Then she was opposed to communism, the communist takeover of Eastern Europe. And so the Czech Philharmonic, for example, refused to play with her at the Glyndebourne Festival. And she had issues there. And, and then finally she got married and around 1960 had a child and devoted most of the rest of her career to motherhood and essentially retired. And I don't blame her a bit. I don't think we can possibly understand or exaggerate the difficulty of maintaining a career Maintaining a violin, especially as a violinist, I mean, a crack violinist, being a Jewish, female, attractive, young performer in the 40s and 50s. I, I, I just, it, it must have been really, really, really brutal. And I, I don't think that uh, there was much reason for her to continue. And, you know, one of the things about this set However excellent it is, and it is, her Brahms concerto is marvelous. The Bach is beautiful. I mean, she's the Schubert is really great to have. I I I enjoy it. It's you know, but the notes do the typical. Oh, it's a shame she retired. It's a shame she didn't keep on making records. No, it's not a shame. It's not a shame at all. Unless unless she was distressed over it, then I feel bad for her. But I mean, for the world at large, for the rest of us. What does it really mean to have a million of these incredibly talented people all playing the same things? I mean, thank God we've got the Schubert here, which gives this set a little bit of distinction because not every violinist in the world does Schubert music for violin and piano. It's a little bit unusual. But otherwise, it's the same works that have been recorded splendidly a thousand times. Could you put this on and say, aha, that's Marcy. It could be no one else. I dare any of you, any of you to do that, however good it is. It's, 
absolutely wonderful. It really is. But the question really it becomes, how much of this stuff do we need? It's all getting re-released. It's all getting boxed up. And here we have, I mean, nine lovely mono CDs featuring a, a tremendous musical talent, no question about it, a wonderful violinist, but one of many wonderful violinists. And I'm not saying she's faceless. I'm not saying she has no distinction. She has all of those things. She does. She really, really does. What I'm saying is, do you need more? Do you really need more? I, I ask myself that question seeing this set. I really do, because I... It's it's just, I have so much of these things. I mean, I've heard some of these before. I knew who she was. Most people don't know who she was. I mean, I can't say that if you get this, it's going to be a transfiguring experience in the history of record collecting. I just can't. I'd like to. I really would. I don't even know, to be honest with you, what that would sound like today given what's out there, given our experience, given the huge glut of stuff. So, yeah, this is historically interesting. Um, it is. Yes, she was a very, very fine artist, a really fine artist. I hope, if I, I suspect and I hope that when she finally settled down to a life of domesticity, that she was just happy that all the shit she put up with was over. I don't think the music was worth it. If I had been in her shoes, between the, the lecherous record producers running from the Nazis, being in an internment camp, having to deal with obnoxious conductors, I mean, I, I would have quit in a heartbeat. I really would have. And maybe she was really smart to do it. But in the meantime, we do have this. It is excellent. I have no problem recommending it to all of you violin fanciers. But I, I do think that her career is something of a cautionary tale. And it says something very interesting about, about you know, the history of recordings and, and artistic careers. And, um, you know, for that reason, I enjoyed it. It was provocative in more ways than the merely musical. But ultimately, it's the merely musical things that really matter. And for the Brahms, this is terrific. And the Mendelssohn with, with Kletsky is really terrific. And Savalish is really good, too. The Bach, I think, is beautiful. The Schubert is unique. The Schubert is unique in its, in its, in its lovely singing lyricism. I really think it is. So if you care about those things particularly, especially the Schubert, you definitely want to get this. Otherwise, um, you can take a pass. You really can and not feel bad about it. You're not missing anything epic. And uh, I think maybe Miss Marcy would have wanted it that way. So keep on listening, my friends. Thank you so much for joining me. Take care. <laughs>